Hurricane Aaron is becoming a massive hurricane off the coast of the United States, and this is about to become a major hurricane again. This will cause a ton of different problems, including storm surge, life-threatening rip currents, hurricane-force wind gusts, beach erosion, and much more. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down exactly what you need to know about Hurricane Aaron and what has changed over the last 24 hours. We'll begin with what Hurricane Aaron looks like right now, and this hurricane is growing in size exponentially. You can see it has a fairly large field of outflows that are currently stretching even towards the outer banks of North Carolina today. And on top of that, there is now an eye once again with Hurricane Aaron, which also indicates that this is intensifying again. The pressure has dropped about 10 millibars so far today and is expected to continue to drop as it continues to track to the north here. And it will just be staying off the coast of the United States, but that doesn't mean we are not going to see impacts along the East Coast. And Hurricane Aaron's impacts actually began yesterday back over in Cape Hatteras. This is a view of all the waves and also all the surf that we are beginning to see here. There are some abandoned homes right along the beach that actually have water already getting up towards them and these might be destroyed by tomorrow after all the storm surge and the high waves move in. And here's a closer view of Hurricane Aaron just to the east of the Carolinas right now and you can see the eye of the hurricane has become a lot more apparent over the last 12 hours or so. Additionally, there is just tons of convection all around this thing and as it continues to move to the north, it is going to continue to get pulled which means that this will continue to really just get larger over the next couple of days, which also means our wind field is going to get larger, which is why we are anticipating tropical storm force winds at the bare minimum for areas like North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, and Delaware, at least along the coastal regions, but there could be some hurricane force wind gusts as well. And this is Hurricane Aaron on satellite imagery, and this is just a stunning view of both the eye of the hurricane coming much more apparent over the last six hours, and on top of that, you can just see the size of this thing. I mean, if this was over the state of Florida, it would basically take up the entire state. That is how large this hurricane currently is from north to south and west to east. This would literally take up the, both Carolinas as well if it was over land. So this is quite the insane hurricane. And the fact that this is not making landfall in the United States is also pretty crazy because it looks like it's going to with how close it is to the Carolinas. Luckily, we are still forecasting the eye of the hurricane to stay offshore from North Carolina by approximately 150 miles. But that does not mean we will not see impact. Now, over the next couple of days, Hurricane Aaron will be making its closest approach to the United States, and we are forecasting that this will become a Category 3 hurricane once again later today. It is on the cusp of that as of right now, but it should become a Category 3 hurricane, which means a major hurricane by as early as this afternoon, if not by the evening hours. By the time it's just off the coast of North Carolina by about 150 miles, it will be at least 120 mile per hour winds with wind gusts as high as 150 miles per hour, and this could actually get a little bit stronger than that with how it looks right now in satellite imagery. There is a chance that it could try to make a run at becoming a category four hurricane again i think the odds of that happening are low but we definitely cannot rule it out with how intense this hurricane has been and then as we go into friday and saturday this hurricane is forecasted to move off to the northeast it will be staying away from new england however if you're in far southeastern new england near cape cod you will likely feel at least some minor impacts out of hurricane aaron now let's go through all the impacts and also the timing of hurricane aaron and we'll begin with the timing so this is what it looks like wednesday night hurricane aaron will be making its closest approach to north North Carolina. Some of the outer bands will likely be reaching Cape Hatteras and some of the islands, which is why we also have mandatory evacuation orders in place. Not necessarily because of these outer bands, but because of how strong the winds are going to be. All those high waves are going to be pushed right towards the coastline, which is going to cause the potential for beach erosion, which we're already seeing. And on top of that, we are anticipating the potential for significant storm surge. As we go into Thursday morning, this hurricane is just offshore of North Carolina, still, still causing some big, big impacts, especially for Cape Hatteras, even back over near Virginia Beach, we're likely going to see some storm surge. And then by Thursday evening, this continues to track to the northeast, just staying south of New England. We will likely at least see some wind gusts that are a bit more elevated back over in Cape Cod, somewhere around 30 to 40 miles per hour. And then eventually, as we go into Friday, this will be moving out to sea and away from the United States. But life-threatening rip currents are expected to continue through at least Friday, if not even into Saturday and Sunday. So take it safe out there if you are at the beach. Now let's talk more about the impacts that Hurricane Aaron will be bringing to the United States, and there is a bunch of them, including the wind. This is what it looks like right now for our wind field over the last several days with Hurricane Aaron. And even though that this hurricane has gotten weaker over time, at the time we're recording this forecast, it's a high-end Category 2 hurricane, it doesn't mean the wind field has gotten smaller because it hasn't. It's actually gotten larger over time. Our hurricane force winds will be staying, for the most part, offshore. We're not expecting those to reach the United States, but our tropical storm force wind field has gotten so large that we are expecting at least some of that to leak in to the 
coastline of North Carolina. We might even see it a little bit in Virginia, perhaps even very far southern Delaware could be talking about at least some tropical storm force winds. So this is what we can expect in terms of our peak wind gusts over the next few days out of Hurricane Aaron and back over in the outer banks of North Carolina. We are forecasting wind gusts to peak around 60 to 75 miles per hour. And then if you're back over a little bit further inland in North Carolina, Virginia, even back through Delaware, New Jersey, we will likely still see wind gusts around 30 to 40 miles per hour. So at least feel a little bit of this hurricane, but obviously not very much. It might just be enough for you to notice it outside that, hey, it's windy, trees... Well, apparently it is windy in my studio, but obviously, you know what I mean? If you feel the wind picking up a little bit here on Thursday, you will pretty much know that it is from Hurricane Aaron, at least from the outer edge of Hurricane Aaron. So again, the winds are going to be pretty high. It'll be enough to cause at least some isolated power outages if you're back over at Cape Hatteras. Overall, though, if you're any further off to the west or north, we're not expecting power outages. It'll just be gusty winds for the most part, which will begin as early as this afternoon and run all the way through Friday morning. Now, another big concern and something that has already caused hundreds of water rescues across the entire east coast over the last couple of days is rip currents and this is a life-threatening threat that stretches all the way from miami florida back into new england right now there is a high risk of rip currents today tomorrow it's basically going to be the same story so if you're anywhere along the east coast of the united states i would honestly just again make sure that if you're at the beach and you see the flag and it does show red or purple whatever color it shows you want to make sure that you are going by whatever it says to do if it says don't swim do not swim in the waters because it is dangerous and we've already seen hundreds of water rescues and you do not want to get pulled out to see it is a very dangerous threat that we're going to continue to see over the next few days and hurricane Aaron is going to bring a lot of storm surge over the next 48 hours and believe it or not we could see storm surge as far north as new york city over the next couple of days this is the latest forecast from the national hurricane center we are anticipating one to three feet of storm surge from the south sante river all the way back through sandy hook in new jersey and then if you're back over in the cape hatteras area near cape lookout out back through duck that is where we're anticipating up to four feet of storm surge and hurricane Aaron is going to bring a punch when it comes to our wave heights over the next couple of days we are expecting 50 to 100 foot waves to be offshore of North Carolina but if you're back over right along the coastline of South Carolina North Carolina even back through Delaware especially near Cape Hatteras there will be a peak of around 15 to 20 foot waves and back over in Cape Hatteras high tide is at about 6 a.m. tomorrow morning which is when we are also forecasting waves to be as high as 15 to 20 feet so that is a big concern right now back over in North Carolina and then throughout the day Thursday and into early Friday morning we are expecting waves to increase as well back over in southern New England and we are also anticipating rip currents to become even more dangerous up here and we do have a lot more to talk about in the tropics we have two other areas of development in the Atlantic Ocean both of them have at least 50 percent chances of developing over the next seven days one of which is all the way back over just to the west of Africa this has a very brief chance of developing and if it does it may become our next named tropical storm at least for a brief stint and then our other area of development has slightly more concern as it will be close to the leeward islands in just a few days but however this is expected to take a north turn so at this point we are not forecasting this particular wave to go into the caribbean or even towards the united states let's hope it stays that way there's always a small chance it could change but if it does change we will be the first to let you know make sure you are subscribed to the channel in case anything does change with this tropical wave but outside of Aaron, it looks like we are going to end august at least quiet across the United States. So again, we got 11 days until the end of August, and we are very close to the peak of hurricane season. So we do anticipate that hurricane season is going to ramp up in a big way very soon. Now, for more about the weather across the rest of the United States, one of the biggest things that we are going to talk about in our next video is one of the coldest blasts that we've seen in the month of August in quite some time. We are expecting some very cold weather across the Great Plains, the Ohio Valley, back into the Midwest and the Northeast by the middle of next week. Temperatures are probably going to fall by as much as 20 to 30 degrees in some areas, which means that we could have high temperatures in the 60s in the Midwest, 40s, and maybe even upper 30s in the Midwest for low temperatures as we go into the middle of next week. We're going to talk all about this in our next forecast, as I do think today is going to be probably the last forecast regarding Hurricane Aaron, unless we have a morning update tomorrow, but I don't think we're going to see any more major changes. If any other major changes happen, though, with Hurricane Aaron, we will have another video tomorrow morning. Outside of that, though, our next forecast is going to be talking all about this big cold blast that is coming here in the month of August. And as always, thank you all so much for watching today's forecast if you are new to the channel make sure to subscribe down below we may have another video tomorrow talking about hurricane Aaron. if we do not though our next forecast will probably be on friday talking all about that big weather pattern change that is coming up as we go into next week so stay tuned for that click the bell icon so you're notified with the latest updates and we'll see you guys all again in the next forecast